Okay. Now we uh, that the second hour, we study the virtue of justice and attach to the virtue of justice the notion of right. Huh? Right. So what is justice? So justice from the word jus in Latin, jus juris, jus. That means the right huh? of the law. It's interesting to see, for example, the Latin countries, Spain, French, and Portuguese, uh, they don't they speak about right. What they translate use is found in right. But the Anglo Saxon country they translate law. So in French, for example, we have Ecole de Droit, Escuela de Derecho in Spanish, huh? uh, de Derecho in Italian. So the Latin emphasis more on the right of the people. And the Anglo Saxon law school. Huh? You have to obey the law. <laughs> it's interesting as the genius of the language. Huh? Uh, for one, is this for me, my interest, I have to fight for huh? right. And the other, no, the law. You have to obey the law. Okay. So uh, justice may be defined as the strong and firm will to give each one his due. Give each one his due. Duty. Huh? Duty is attached to justice. Huh? So, so understood, justice is the habitual disposition. What is that habitual disposition? It's a habit. Huh? And what it is good, it is a virtue. Huh? This position, uh, whose subject is the will. So the will is inclined to give each one his due. Um, that is the subjective sense. Subjective sense. Now, in a broader context, huh, the objective sense. The notion also includes the objective right that is owed to each person and community. You know, if it is to give each one his due, that is subjective. What is the due? That is the right. So you have the subjective meaning, that means I am to give the due to the other, and the objective meaning, it is what I have to do. I pay, I, I buy a, a car, so a, a subjective meaning, I have to, to give to the dealer the price of the car. Now the right, huh, it is the person has the right to receive something. So in fact, in every injustice, we have a subjective aspect and an objective aspect. Huh? Okay. Uh, on the basis of either natural law or le just legislation of the state. So the, the basis of the practice of justice can be either natural law, as a human being, I have to respect, for example, the life of others. I have to help those who are sick, etc. And or also on the civil law, uh, civil law, I have to pay such amount of taxes to my country. You know, when you pay taxes to your country, uh, like what do you do? In fact, you, you obey natural law, you obey justice, but it, it, but that natural law is precise by the civil law. Well, I will tell you an example. Uh, as a human being, I must respect the life of my brothers. In justice, huh, according to natural law, I must respect the life of my, my brothers and sisters. But in the civil law, they say, you stop at the right light. You know? that I, obey natural, I obey civil law. Huh? I stop at the right light because civil law tells me to stop, but at the same time, I obey natural law, respecting the life of others. I continue. Um, and on the basis of either natural law or just legislation of the state, and sometimes on the basis of the law or statutes in which consequent obligations are expressed. Uh, for example, the case of voluntary association. You enter Rotary Club, you enter the Knight of Columbus, you enter, enter the Missionary of the Holy Apostle, you enter, you enter the Permanent Deacon of Norwich, 
So we have uh, to obey some laws. And when you obey the laws of Knight of Columbus, the rule, etc., then you are just, you practice justice. Obedience, in fact, is justice. It's not the implication of the virtue of prudence and justice. As being not a basic moral insight, and the virtue of prudence are involved in determining what is due and the mean not only of reason but of reality. And this not only abstractly, universally, but also concretely here and now. No, that everything is important here. I explain. So as being not a basic moral insight and virtue of prudence, huh? we have to use continually our judgment uh, virtue of prudence when we practice justice. Uh, we cannot take a decision. Huh? We cannot take a decision here without using our intellect, uh, our practicing justice, uh, judgment. Huh? Okay? In determining what is due and the mean, not only what I have to do, I have to give it, how I have to accomplish that. Huh? Okay? And not in general, but in the concrete situation. So prudence is not in general, it is for a particular case, in situation. The role of virtue of justice. Um, the precise role is, first, to facilitate the unbiased search for objective right. To search, to will, to find, the objective right. In fact, to be sincere in my research for right. Uh, if I have some, about some things from someone, I, I want to know exactly what I have to pay to him in strict justice. Huh? Secondly, to determine the will to acknowledge, huh? the will to, to, to recognize that I have it. You know, not only I know but I must will to recognize my debt to the other. I must recognize what I have, the due to the other. You know, it, it, that is a lack of the will. I will to recognize I have to pay something. I, I, not in theory, I, I, I apply that to my life. And second, thirdly, fulfill the right as known. That means to execute. Here we have, uh, the second is the intention. Uh, intention and, and, the, and the execution. So I must know, I must will, I must execute. Uh, execute. Uh, all that is the virtue of justice. It's not only to know, it is to put into practice. Uh, okay. um, we can say that the, the prudence is the last practical judgment. When you study St. Thomas, it is huh, number six and no, uh, excuse me, five and seven. Huh? The last practical judgment. And the last practical judgment, it is you who fix that. For example, St. Francis of Assisi was the son of the richest man in Assisi, in the area. Okay? So when he decided to become poor, it was for him the last judgment. Now, he knew that he, he, money is very useful. He knew all those things, because he used that before his conversion. But the decision you take, it is the last, huh? you fix the last judgment. Because the intellect will not stop. The intellect continually will continue to reason. Huh? Remember the fable of uh, Puritan ass. I explain that to you, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The poor ass <laughs> in front of the two hip of it die. <laughs> because he is not able to stop his daily variation. So the will is finally thinking that is for me the best. Not in itself, for me, that is the best. So for me, Francis of Assisi, to renounce to wealth. Not accept the wealth of my father for me is the best. So that means the last judgment depends on your will. The last judgment depends. It is you who fix the last judgment. 
You know, for example, when I became a priest, it, it is I who fixed the last judgment. For me, to become a priest and holy apostle, for me, that is the best. I tried to become a Dominican, to become a Jesuit. I tell my about big order, and Jesus sent me that little, little community. <laughs> <laughs> Did you graduate from here? No. No? No, I graduated from the Ottawa University. <laughs> no. No. I mean, what I want to say, you know, <laughs> it, it, in fact, what is the act of decision? It is to fix the last motivation. And the motive you have, it is the one you decide. The motive is in your, and it is first in your mind, in your intellect. But it is you who decide, I do that by pride, or I do that by love of God. Remember the, the, the man who, who put money in the trunk? Huh? He paid yeah, he people to play the trumpet. You know? well, that, the last judgment for him is the, my glory. Look at me. You know? The poor women, they put five cents. My last judgment, but I am very poor, but Lord, I love you. I give you that. You know? The, the little I have, I give it to you. So that is, uh, it is the, 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 the will. And to do that action requires the virtue of justice. It is by the virtue of justice that you are able to fix the motive of your action. So the motive of your action is not only in your intellect. The motive of your action is known by your intellect, but it is fixed, it is decided by your will. That is interesting. You see here, the will has a power over the intellect. A power, because if you continue to reason, you will never act, but you will think continually without doing nothing. Okay? So the positive law. The role of positive law. Generally, the legislation provides that by positive law, positive means fact, huh? is necessary for three things. First, to assure justice by, uh, in society. Uh, we need precision because it's not enough to, for example, the general universal law say you will not kill. Huh? You will, you will uh, respect your father and mother. Well, that is universal. But the, physic, the, the positive law can put some precision about that, you know, okay? To corroborate what is known to be due on the basis of natural law, and to further determine the requirement to answer to the nature and calling of men in a given historical or governmental situation. Well, for example, uh, um, the second, to corroborate what is known to be due on the basis of natural law. So the positive law helps you to precise the way you will, uh, you will obey, you will obey natural law. Well, think about marriage, for example. Well, marriage is something natural. But in every society, there are positive laws about marriage. Because you know, we, it is necessary for the good of the society, for the order of society. So, marriage is based on natural law, but the natural law about marriage is precise by positive law. Okay? Um, so, uh, we can say the positive laws are the interpreters of natural law. Huh? The interpret the precise natural law. For example, you, you, you must contribute to the common good. That is a natural law. Huh? But in the country, in your country, in my country, you see, you will pay such amount of money for your income tax. Or you buy a bicycle, you buy a car, you will pay 5% 5, 5 of tax, etc. You know? So that is precise by, natural, by civil law. But the civil law is not creating something new. It is only precising what is already contained in the natural law. Another example, the uh, oath. Huh? Well, it, 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 it is, must tell the truth. 
especially when we, may, we tell the truth on their oath. That is natural enough, okay? But the country can precise, if you don't respect, if you commit a perjury, you can be accused and put in jail for uh, five years, for example, you know, or three, depending on the country. That is an interpretation of natural law, to precise uh, people how they can uh, realize natural law, etc. or be natural law. Now, next paragraph. A just law can become useless and unjust when? Because of altered circumstances. Is circumstances change sometimes? Uh, a just law can become obsolete. Huh? Um, however, whenever the, there is doubt, a such matter, one decision should favor the law. I give you an example. In the Canadian law, there was a, a rule, a, a, a law saying, a horse cannot uh, run more than 20 miles per hour in, the, in any village. That was the law in the time they were no car. They were only horses. So they say, you know, the streets in the village are not race. It's not the, the derby, Kentucky Derby. Huh? So you have to respect. But after that, they changed and they have other law. Huh? When I was young, it was 45 miles per hour. On Montreal, Toronto road, but 45 miles per hour. After that, 60, after that, 65 years, my per hour, you know? In Germany, uh, no limit, huh? okay? So that is the precision. Some old law has no, no reason to exist, so we suppress that, you know? We interpret the, the, the will of the legislator. So now, when we apply the law, that is important. The law is there, but the way we apply that, and we have a virtue attached to the application of the law, we call that epikeia. If we are afraid of that Greek word, epikeia, right equity. As a part of truth and the virtue of epikeia uh, play a role in safeguarding the higher value of the natural law in face of the imperfection of positive laws and in determining particular circumstances unforeseen by the legislator and thus falling outside of his purview, uh, limit, when one need not observe the letter of the law. In fact, epikeia or equity, it is to apply the law according to the spirit of the law and not to the foot of the letter of the law. Okay? To apply more the spirit of the law than the law to the letter. I give you an example. Well, in my country, maybe in your matter, but in a person who does not pay his rent has three months to to uh, to be uh, evicted. Uh, evicted. Evicted. Okay. Suppose there is an old woman, uh, and that old woman did not pay for three months. So the, the owner, he can call the, we say in French, the BC, the man who is doing that job, uh, to keep people out. <laughs> and he say, okay, take all his, his clothes, his bed, his furniture in the snow, hmm? minus 20 Fahrenheit. At the letter of the law, you are right, but you are immoral if you do that. You don't respect epikeia. You don't respect equity. You apply the law without taking care, taking care of the human person. You know, so that is very important in the application of the law. We cannot always apply the law at the foot of the letter. We must take the spirit on the, of the legislator when he wrote that law. You know? okay. I give an example <laughs> that happened in Canada recently in Montreal, in, uh, uh, when you pass in front of a school of a park in, in Canada, it's 30 kilometers per hour. That means about 18 miles per hour. It is here 25, not 18. A poor woman, she drove and the police caught her with a, with a radar and she went 31 kilometers per hour. 
and the police gave a ticket to that woman. <laughs> and she went to court, and the judge, you say, you are not legally distant, you have to pay. <laughs> I find that very, very not conform to equity. How you can measure one mile, one kilometer different on front earth? The spirit of the law said that woman, or oh, if she, she passed 35, 45 miles per hour in front of the school, that is not the same. Mm -hmm. You know, to be able to apply the law not at the foot of the letter. And as a teacher, for example, many times you have to do that. I have to do that many times because some student is sick or something. You know, I can say, if you don't take, give me your document at 7 p.m., huh? You fail. And you don't, you give not seven and ten minutes. Too late. <laughs> fail. That is not equity. That is not equity. In fact, we have always to use our judgment huh? and our heart. The law must not always be applied to the foot of the letter. Okay? Um, because the circumstance, you see in Latin, sumum ius, summa inuria. That's the principle. Sumum, the, the summit of ius, huh? uh, the, the summit of, uh, of law, huh? if you apply the law at the top, huh? you commit the summit of injustice. That means when you apply the law at the foot, you commit an injustice, the, the greatest injustice. Word for word, word for word, the greatest use, the greatest light, the greater, the greatest in, in injustice. That is a principle from the time of the Roman. That means we have to understand the people to, you know, tolerate, etc. Mm -hmm. And to tolerate is not to accept, but, you know, many circumstances, okay? Or some teacher, they say, when the class begins, you close the door, and after that, just to that huh? examination. Ah, you are 30 seconds too late. Oh. Epiki. Uh, epikeia. Huh? E equity. Common sense, huh? okay? Sometimes people, they lack common sense when they become the boss. <laughs> okay, kinds of justice now. So justice, the, um, you have three kinds of justice. You have the justice of exchange huh? between two equal persons, two equal groups, two equal uh, moral beings. For example, the city of New Haven and the Knight of Columbus. <coughs> or be between John Blow and Pat uh, Anderson. You know? Two persons. So to between two persons, exchange. For example, it can be uh, <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> so you go to the queue, huh? and here, uh, the, 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 the maid, the servant, pass you ice cream, you have to give money. That commutative justice, exchange. Huh? Commercial. Commerce. Interesting. Huh? Commerce. In Latin, commerce means pity. Pity, mercy. Huh? Come, it is an exchange based on mercy. In French, when we have a service, we say mercy after, mercy. Mercy. That means, uh, when we, we exchange, commute and commute as if a chain. We practice come mercy. Come mercy, commercium, mercium, mercy is an exchange. I, in fact, it is, you have to say mercy to, take, to thank people. Someone, they say, when I go to the store, I don't have to say thank you. Yes, you have to say thank you. 
it is a service. Of course you pay, but if you are not there, you will not have that. So it is a change, a change. At Christmas, one of the antiphon we say in Latin say, Oh, admirabile, marvelous, commercium exchange. Commercium, God and man, they exchange. Man become God and God become man. Jesus came to us to make us son of God huh? and daughter of God. Okay, so next page. <laughs> um, um, uh, so the commutative justice, uh, it is between uh, two persons, uh, equal, equality, I mean, based on equality. Huh? Here it is based on equality. Now, um, so um, commutative justice aim is the utility of both parties uh, who exchange their card, good or service. So uh, we exchange. One have mercy on the other. I give you ice cream, I have pity on you because you are hungry for ice cream. And I say, oh, I have pity on you, I give you five dollars because I know you have to, to eat <laughs> and to pay you. Is that, it's exchange. Huh? Trade is made on equality exchange, normally. But this morning in class, with the other class, we saw that 82% uh, of the population of the world Excuse me, 20% of the population of the world control 87% of the economy of the world. And the other control 1, 1%, 4%, 11%. Hmm? That is not justice. Okay. Secondly, legal justice. But I would prefer to speak that first about commuted, commerce, uh, distributive justice. I don't follow further. Uh, on the Wallace. It is the justice of the whole, for example, the city, the community, the country, no? the whole, in regard of the individual. No? It is the justice of, for example, the state of Connecticut in the regard of the poor future permanent digger. When they have to pay their taxes for it, no. When they have, it is to distribute Huh? to make all people participating in the common good. Huh? For example, in common good, roads. Huh? Roads are common good. Uh, syst water system is common good. Firefighter, police security, all that is common good. Huh? And we, we enjoy that. So, <laughs> the, 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 society, huh? the society must take care of the individual Huh? But not on an equal, not equality, but in a proportional, pre, pro, in proportion, proportionality. According to their needs, according to their merits. <laughs> huh? For example, um, Uh, the salary of the worker for the government, for example. It must be according to their needs. No, excuse me, not that they have, like that's a good example, forget that. Um, allowances for uh, families, for example, in some countries. I don't know if you have, you have that in Connecticut. But I remember the first time uh, in Canada <laughs> during the war, or just after the war, the government decided family allowances. So depending on the number of children, and my father's a great joy in my family because we were six children at that time. Can you imagine my mother was so happy? Huh? It was proportional. If we have three children, four children, that you receive more, huh? and more and more and more. Okay? So that is proportional. Proportional to your needs. For example, here in the United States, recently, um, we have uh, evaluated 47 million people living on stamps. That, that money comes from the common good. You know, and it is distributed according to the need. I met recently a man from Connecticut here. He was, yes, a very good job. 
and the companies closed the door, closed the, went to another country to make more money. But the poor guy is 50, 54. He has no job, he has a family, he has nothing. And you remember in 2008, Enron, mm -hmm. big company, mm -hmm. employee at about $70 in average of salary. Those guys, they lost everything. They have to live with stamps. That is distributive justice. According to the needs, but also according to the merits, the responsibilities. For example, it's normal that the President of the United States has a salary superior to the teacher of philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> I have no envy, I am very happy, I agree with that. But I don't agree that a pitcher of ball, a ball, threw the ball, $20 million. I cannot agree. With it. For me, it's absolutely immoral. Excuse me, it is immoral. Because it's not according to the merit. It's not according to the need. I shut my big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, just instant justice. Your mother did that, no? Your mother practiced distributive justice. You remember when we have six, seven children at home, and your mother prepared a meal? Did she give exactly the same portion to everyone? The big boy working on the farm with the father, and the, and the little boy, the first class, this is the same piece of meat? No. Your mother practiced just distributive justice according to your needs and to your merit. She said, oh, you have a good result in class. You have the middle, huh? middle for uh, 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 participation. Oh, I will give you uh, uh, not only two bottles of ice cream, three bottles of ice cream. <laughs> and your brother and your sister look at you. But you, you were not generous because they know you merit that. And if they want to have a third ball, they must be good in class. <laughs> Distributive justice. In every society, the common good must be a repartment. Huh? Not equality, but distribute. And finally, you have the legal justice. It is the relation between the individual in regard of the common good of the society. That means we have to participate in the common good. But imagine if tomorrow the state of Connecticut says, you know, you men, citizens of Connecticut, you are so mature, so good. This year you will, you will fix yourself the amount of tax you will pay. <laughs> I think Connecticut will receive almost nothing. <laughs> so it is necessary that there is a law, there be a law to precise your participation in the community. It, we call that legal because the word lex, legis, law. If there is no law, we will not participate in the government. Very rare somebody will write a check to the government, the Commonwealth of Connecticut, saying, I send you $10,000 for my volunteer participation in the common good of the state. I think probably never happened. If, if that happened, CNN will be there. <laughs> <laughs> We must be enlightened. That is interesting. It is a case where we see that the positive law precise the natural law. Indicate how you pay. And the same, the same thing here. Huh? You should pay according to your capacity. Huh? If, if we are poor, you know, uh, what is that? the ex-candidate? He was the, the governor of... Uh, Rome. 
Governor Rowley? Uh, Rowley. No, no, uh, Khalif, he was uh, um, of, um, of Massachusetts, he presented as a pres president. Romney. 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 He said, I will settle the problem, everyone will pay 15 percent. I pay, in fact, he paid 50 percent of his, of his money, 50 percent. Think about that. Is it just? It is unjust. Why? Because 50 percent for a billionaire, it's a peanut. 50 percent for a poor woman who cleaned the toilet in the airport at, uh, at uh, um, your airport. Brave. <laughs> That person, 15, is huge. Because 15 percent for her is horrible. 15. We cannot practice legal justice. Uh, excuse me, uh, uh, equality. No equality. No equality. It is based, in fact, it, it is a case of distributive justice. But we call that legal because it must be enlightened, precise by law. Otherwise, nobody will pay. And the problem, it is even the rich, and they try not to pay. They pay lawyer not to pay. <laughs> they prefer to pay millions of dollars to lawyer than, be, than to the government. That is the situation. Okay. So the three levels of justice. Huh? So commutative justice, distributive justice, and legal justice. If you know that, when you be, before your organization, you have to pass a canonical examination, if I ask question, I will ask that question. I ask that every year to my student who, who prepare to in menu. I'm surprised they don't know that or they forget the three level of justice. Okay, go to page 483. Now that the, the basic principle here huh, for distributive justice and legal justice is the comparison with organism. And the society is like an organism in an organism, every member work for the other. They collaborate. They receive good, but they have to give. Huh? Society is give and receive. And what is interesting, St. Francis of Assisi, he said, he said first is to, is to, uh, to ask. <laughs> to ask. Uh, to ask the aid from other. Why? Because because we are, by nature, by nature, we are interdependent. Nobody, even Ben Gates, Bill Gates, or above, can say, I am totally independent. They depend on the doctor, they depend on the dentist, they depend on the lawyer. We depend, nobody can say, I am totally independent. We are interdependent. And uh, we can be, we are de on equal equality here, but here we are dependent not on the same level. Someone are very tall and someone are very small. Someone are excessively rich, someone are just the minimum to live. You know? okay. I continue. <coughs> so rather, uh, is an organism, special care is due to the weak member. The weak here. Huh? We have to take care of the weak. You know, I, am a, I am afraid with the law about euthanasia. I am afraid. Very afraid. Because it will be a good mean to get rid of the old people, to save millions of dollars and avoid palliative care. We don't see the consequence of that. It will be horrible. Millions of people they will be killed under the pretext. Or, you know, it, it, you open the door, and it's the same for abortion. You open the door, he after the door, huh? free for all. That, that is, for me, it's a big, big, big mistake we are doing. And what is funny, we criticize Hitler because Hitler practiced eugenism, he practiced euthanasia, and we say, he was a monster. And now we do exactly the same thing and with more perfection. Legally. So, to kill 
people. In fact, it, is it only to, sh to, to stop their suffering? No. It is to make our world not to suffer, not suffer too much. Mm. That, that, you make an insurance company, they will save millions of dollars. Billions of dollars because of that. So no, I don't know where we are going to. Uh, there is a movie produced in Canada in the 19th, The Decline of the American, The Decline of the United States. In fact, it declined, The Decline of the Western World, because in, 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 in Belgium, everywhere the same thing. In what is funny, all those countries were Christian, are Christian. But they are Christian only by name. It's, for me, it's, a, it's a, a, people don't see what we are doing now. Huh? Even for birth control, we are in negative progress. In 2000, in uh, in, in 1900, the Caucasian was consisted or 25 percent of the population of the world. Now they are only 12 percent. In one century, our population diminished a half. We don't realize that. I look at recently to a program in television. It was horrified. Two women were talking. And you know, to have a child is only at the end of my career. And it's better not to have a child because, you know. And that is on, on, on television and like uh, the gospel. We'll pay for that, huh? not you, but our future generation will pay for that. Sometimes they, like, they call that the suicide of the Western world. If you go to France, to Paris, to Marseille, you will be surprised to see entire neighborhood completely Muslim. Yes? But what is, what is exactly the reason it's uh, it's a it's a free will of that woman who doesn't want to have a kid. Yes, that's a will. Or, or it's a, it's a cause effect. Okay. Oh, with the cause. Well, the cause will be the pressure of society that it cares over yeah. the woman to. Yeah. Not to have, with that pressure is made by women. The pressure to control is not made by men, except for someone who wants to, to sell uh, medication or pills. Uh, you know, Cardinal Léger, Cardinal Léger was the bishop of, Archbishop of Montreal, he was one of the most important theologians of Vatican II. He said, for me, he said, as for me, the most important revolution in the 20th century is the emancipation of women. The president of the Turkey recently, he said to the Turks, they are Muslim, huh? he said, we must have at least four children by family, otherwise we will disappear. He is a Muslim. Of course, the feminist movement were furious, but it, it is mathematical. Huh? mathematical. He said mathematical. I remember 50 years ago, uh, uh, Mr. Urpe is a French, uh, and is a French, he is a specialist in demography. He told the people, you see, you must have at least three children by family. If we don't have that, we will be in negative growth. And we are in negative growth because we don't have two children by family. Not three, two. So that, huh? um, when we speak about the common good, what is the common good? It is to have more money or to have children. Malthus was a Presbyterian. He said, <coughs> children are the obstacle to wealth. It is exactly what the, the two women on television, they said exactly the same thing. It that is the teaching of capitalism. Because if you divide your, uh, your capital, you will become poor. But they forgot the thing. If we don't have children, we have no worker and we have no consumer so if we want to have worker we must have children 
So in France, in Germany, they don't have workers. What they go? They go to Turkey, they go to uh, uh, Maroc, to Morocco, to, and uh, in Canada, the same thing. Here, we see the same thing. The difference here is many come from Mexico. That is close to us, the same culture. But when you receive the neighborhood where I live in Montreal, when you go on the street, 20 years ago it was totally French Canadian, now it's almost totally Muslim. In my parish, as I was, we have 95% French Canadian Catholic, now they have two mosques on the same street. But people, they don't see that. No, I found the parenthesis. <laughs> it so is a right. I had a question about when you talk about legal yeah. law. I mean, you're talking about the government? I mean, yes, yes. So, the government, I mean, or by the government, or by the government of the, any society. Right, so if the government's looking for the common good, it's one thing, but it seems like as time goes on now, it doesn't seem like they worry about the common good, they worry about a, a vote. So, like when you talk about 15%, I mean, I think if everyone did do 50%, we wouldn't be a problem. But I think some of us probably pay 50% of that, and others don't pay any. So I don't get the common good if we're letting... Um, the vice of democracy is here. The quantity makes the quality. Quantity makes the quality. Yes, because what makes the quality of a law? 50% is right. right. We cannot accept that, but we live in that system. So and we export that system everywhere, and we say that is the best system. So the common good has got to have the best for, for say, politicians and consumers, I mean, and, and taxpayers. It's got to be common good together, correct? You know, democracy would be perfect if everyone was a saint. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Like, for example, in some congregation, or the majority are holy sister, holy brother, you know, that is the vice of Plato was aware of that. He was opposed to democracy because he said it's based on opinion, on passion, on quantity, not on quality. Right. You know, five judges oppose four. One vote decides of the life of millions of babies. Right. That is democracy. No, for me, people, you know, the more I am getting older, the more I think I am getting wiser. And the more I ask questions to democracy, the more I see the limits, the imperfection of democracy. For example, for me, it is almost impossible in the democracy to have a universal truth. Because if you impose a universal truth in democracy, you destroy democracy because John Locke says that the foundation of democracy is tolerance. You are okay, I am okay. Abortion is good for you, okay. Abortion for me, abortion is mad. I respect you, respect me. But you continue to make abortion. And because you are more numerous than on the other side, so you impose to me to abort and to pay for abortion. Excuse me, I am not in my subject. <laughs> Foundation of right, okay? Uh, number 4.2. Consider subjectively, personally, right are founded upon the objective fact of man, nature, and then. Oh, we saw that, huh? It is my nature that made me uh, to have right. A person is effectively to choose those means to attend his, his end, huh? He must have access to them. That means if I have to attend my end, I must have the mean and to have the mean, I, have, I must have the right to use those means. You know, the right I are founded on the obligation I have to attend my my. Own. So uh, page 444, uh, excuse me, 484. We have many here. We have the series of rights. You can find that in the Declaration of Human Rights. And at, at the bottom, you have a, a hierarchy of rights. Oh, not all rights are the same level. Hmm? The hierarchy of right, right and duties. Huh? And uh, you know, I have the right to listen to music. Or I have the right to, to marry. I have the right to, listen, to, to know the truth. It's not the same level, no? So the right is not, all right are not on the same level. And sometimes we can accept not to exercise our right, but some right we cannot get rid of them. 
some rights are inalienable. Huh? Okay. Um, you can read that. I go to uh, only to explain something on page uh, 487. I will finish by that because the rest is only uh, vocabulary uh, notion. Huh? It is about the inalienable right. Inalienable. I will speak a word about that. We have some right, they are attached to our nature. And because they are attached to our nature, we cannot get rid of them. We cannot suppress them. For example, the right to truth. We cannot get rid. I cannot say, no, I don't want to know the truth. No. I am made for the truth. No? Uh, you have the right, for example, to to a fatherhood or motherhood. And that right is in your nature. Or you say, oh, I become a priest, I have no more that right. No, that right is in you for all your life. What do you do when you practice the vow of chastity or celibacy? You accept not to use the right, not to use the right but you, keep, you cannot get rid of that. When I become a priest, I again I committed to celibacy. I was not able to say I renounce to the right of fatherhood. I renounce to not exercise my right because it is in my nature. I cannot renounce to justice. I cannot renounce to truth. I cannot say now, huh? I want to, I want to, everybody, everybody, uh, lies uh, when they speak to me. No. It is in my nature because I am intelligent, so I have I the right to attend the truth. It is in my nature. My na intellect is for the truth, and my will is for the good. You know? Some right we cannot get rid of that. Some right we can suppress the usage of the right. But some right they are not important. I have the right to listen to music. I have the right to play golf. I have many rights, no? But I can say, no, I don't want to use that right. No. I have the right to possess, but I can give my money to others. But some rights, they are inalienable. We cannot get rid of that. And some, so there is a hierarchy of right. No? And another thing, I, want to, I will finish by that, right is always linked with duty. In fact, the Latin countries and Anglo-Saxon countries and Jew and right, in fact, they are correlated. When I have a right, somebody has a duty to respect my right. If I have a right, I have the duty. Uh, if I have a duty, if I have a duty, I have a right to accomplish that duty. For example, is the reason why the parent who, uh, who, who transmit life to their children, and they have the right, not only they have the duty to educate their children, to feed their children, and because of that they have the right to a just wage. They have the right to send their children to high school, to university. You know? the, in the hierarchy of right, for example, it, the, the, the right to go to primary school is higher than the right to go to secondary school. And the right to go to secondary school is higher than the university. That means we must fill first the, the essential need of man. What is essential? It is to be able to write, to read, to write, and to count, to recount. Huh? The three R, huh? write, read. But we are not satisfied, we progress, we progress. But we must assure, huh, the, and when I have a right, there is some duty in regard of that right. We cannot separate, but the mentality of the, our century is to insist only on right. You know, is the reason why I, I told that to you. Huh? I oppose uh, to gay marriage, I oppose. Not because of question of morality, because of question of law, the right. Because rights are attached to duty. The duty of 
parent having children and not the same duty as two men or two women together. They are not the same responsibility. Even if they adopt, they are not the same responsibility. To give life is a risk they don't have, etc. We cannot put on the same level those who don't have the same duties. And that is a thing. We never speak about that in our society. Never. We never speak about the duty. We speak only about the right, the right of the gay. But the right of the person, the father and the mother, they have huge duties. And because of that, they have I right. They don't have the other. But for economic reason, economic reason, they want to be on the same level, to be exempted of taxes, etc. That that's, it's, for me, it's, it's immoral. Excuse me, it's immoral. Not because it is against the sixth commandment, because it is against the notion of right and duty. But never we use that argument. I never listen to that on television. Never. The duties, the right correspond to the duties. I remember a cartoon I saw in Canadian a newspaper. There was a people with a banner on it. It is right. We, are, we reclaim our right. We reclaim our right. It was a little man with a visa. What is that? Poster. Poster. With a poster, he said, I reclaim my duty. <laughs> I reclaim my duties. Nobody reclaims his duties. Everyone reclaims his right. Right, 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 right. But there is a limit. <laughs> we, we don't want to pay taxes, but we want to receive everything, you know? It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. the, 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 in fact, distributive justice and legal justice, they are linked. Like right and duty, they are linked. We cannot separate that. So when you discuss with people, think about that. To use that argument, the, 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 the rights are linked with duties. The more you have responsibilities, the more rights you have. You have less responsibility, you have less right. Because duty and right, they are correlative. They are the two, say, the two faces of the same coin. Huh? The same. Right and duty, we cannot separate that. But in our society, we forget that a coin has two sides. So we say only right, 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 right. And almost never we speak. We dare to speak about duties. We should come back to our friend Emmanuel Kant. Huh? We speak about duties. Huh? For him, it's the most universal fact. We are obliged. Not today, we don't say that. It's a right. I am the right. Never we speak about duties. Now your duty is to fill the evaluation. <laughs> <laughs> and you have the right, right. to write what you want. <laughs> <laughs>